I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Ooh, yay! Ah, uh, okay, here. All right, let's go. Yes. Let's talk to Beast. Indeed. Oh, Pablo's on. Where's my video? Oh, let's start video. How about that? Hey, ooh, look at the hair. The hair. Hey. Still hanging. Still hanging. Is Pablo going to show his face? What is he looking like today, I wonder? Are That's we doing the question? That is the question. Like... What is Pablo looking like? looking like today we doing boho chic we doing canadian husband lumberjack ah. what's going on today i'm waiting with baby breath <laughs> or is he not going to show himself at all he might not be showing up tonight this will be i don't know what's going on here he's like i'm not well anyway there. i'm gonna just go ahead and you know, kick it off. Welcome back to Ask Arena Live's After Show, week four, episode four. Yeah. It's, it's just rolling right along. I'm so excited. And we're no longer limited. I have upgraded on Zoom. Hey, we, on, we are. We are free. on. We are. We are free. <laughs> we is, uh, give us free. Give Black us three months. Yes. Yes. So no more cutting off towards the end. I don't have to give y'all a countdown. <laughs> the countdowns are great though. We're we going to try to keep it close to 30 minutes. We're going to try to keep it close though. We, yeah, exactly. But we don't yeah, want to there, but. if we go over, we go over. There's the oh, doctor. There he is. So wait, Sorry. what's the, what's the get up tonight? Let's, what is this? No what? hat, glasses. No, we're chilling. We are here. We're chilling. Just, you know. A tank top. We're surfer boying tonight. Yeah. You know, we got basketball shorts on, barefoot, chilling. Lord Jesus. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> let I me live. No I have no Come words. Yeah, I don't have any words. We're going to let the doc live. The doc's going to live. Let live. me live. live. All right. I've been coding. I've been on a coding vendor for like the last two days. That's your coder gear? That's what you do? That's how we do it when, when we code? Yeah, it. this is how we code. Well, actually, we code in whatever. Once I get in the zone, that's it. It's a wrap. Mm. But uh, I took a break today, you know, self-care. Hit a nice... Hit a nice uh, twenty minute night. hot shower, Lord and uh, you know had to relax, relate, release. That's good. You got That's all necessary. the right jargon. So you know, since you're talking so much, you should just like introduce yourself. Oh, true. I am a little late. My bad. Must have missed that. Uh, Doctor Paul McNeil uh, with MB Usable Securities. Focus on, or we focus on. Um, Making cybersecurity make sense for small businesses and medium-sized businesses. Um, on Twitter, I am a uh, usable set guy. Yeah, there we go. Coding brain. Yeah. Coding brain. Brain. Horrible. <laughs> and, and I'm applying for that thing in New York. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, for the... Um, Sorry, I'm coming back to being a person. Give me a second. Y'all are like the first people I talked to today for real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I just been coding. Jesus Christ. All I've been doing is like calling my computer all kinds of not computer names um, oh, as my code nice. has it compiled or whatever. Uh, so there's a cybersecurity moonshot challenge in New York that oh. any small business or startup can apply to. Um, when they have a product that they feel can help small businesses in the city uh, with cybersecurity. I think the last time they did, I think this is their third go around. The last time they did it, it focused on different aspects of city life. And so this year is cybersecurity. So the deadline is tomorrow. I've been working on it on and off. I've mostly been coding. So I'm trying to get it knocked out before tomorrow afternoon. So, yeah. You're such a It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Yeah. Best yeah. of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, indeed. I, I will introduce myself. I am Sarah Morgan. I am the Chief Excellence Officer of Buzzaroni LLC, which is a human resources 
leadership and management coaching and consulting firm. Um, you can find me on the interwebs most easily at the buzz on HR, the buzz on HR everywhere. So I realized that I never, ever introduced myself, which no, is very no. much aligned with this whole thing is I'm being selfless, you know, uh -oh. I ask Serena live oh, oh. all about me. So I'm like, well, let me just give them all the shots. Or all them forget them. Probably shut your, hey, you know, watch yourself, okay? Where's the I don't love? know what, just watch it, it's okay? Love. Watch it's right it. Here. All love, all love. Yeah. So Janine Truitt, Chief Innovations Officer for Town Think Innovations, LLC, <coughs> New York. And um, I would I would love for you not to cough during my intro. Sorry, <laughs> you don't sound rude. Uh, <laughs> you don't sound. But anyhow, my firm. My focus, I'm a business consulting uh, firm where I focus on workforce planning, digital transformation projects, and tech advisory. And if you want to find out more about Talent Think, you can find out more at www.talentthinkinnovations.com. I'm also at Zarina of HR everywhere. So. Did you mute yourself so you can cough like a maniac? Yes, because mm -hmm. <laughs> there was some coughing that needs to happen. And you're, I forgot there was a mute button. My bad. My bad. Yeah, you know, you see. You know, I, like, I'm slipping. I'm going to get my intro down like y'all soon, too. I'm going to be like, go to www.nvusecurity.com. See? <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, a skill. Yeah. We've been at this for a while. It's a yeah. skill. For a minute, yes. You got to have your 15-second <laughs> elevator pitch ready <laughs> on deck, like, bail. You got to have Give me it. money, and I'll do marketing analytics and help you be secure. There we go. 15 seconds. I'm on it. Blah. It works. It works. <laughs> so self-love, guys. How, yeah. how, how are you working this? Do you feel like... I, I do have a specific question. Do you feel like self-love is easier at the age you're at right now or do you feel like it, there was a different time in your life in which you were able to cultivate this in a better way like is it is it kind of age specific or is it just like a lifelong kind of challenge in your mind i think that i'm better at it now than i was when i was younger um it's just more of a focal point now but I think life caused that to be necessary so I had to because I and I think you you touched on this a lot in the show for women professional women mothers wives like suddenly our identity shifts and so much of, of what we are starts to be about uh, who we who we are to other people and not who we are to ourselves and so it becomes so easy for us to get lost in that and uh, like most women you know that happens and so then you have to start to redefine <clears throat> what who you are for yourself and you start to develop selfish habits in order to establish boundaries between yourself and other people. So I wish there was a moment in the show where you said that we teach people, we teach little people, kids, when, when we're young, that you're supposed to think of others. And we don't teach the children how to think of themselves. And I was like, ooh, let me write that down because that is so critical. Um, it's particularly for this generation coming up in the, the stages that they are. You got to learn. That's a skill that I think we need to be helping young people cultivate early um, healthy boundaries and, and self-love because if not, you get into your late 20s, 30s, 40s, and the struggle will be real because suddenly you will find yourself being defined by other people and just confused, you know, about yourself mm -hmm. and your existence. So it's easier for me now because of the journey that I've gone through, but I think my journey would have been easier if I had taken mm -hmm. more time to get to know <laughs> myself and, and establish those boundaries sooner. Yeah, agreed. Okay. I, I desperately need a man's 
point of view because I really don't know how you guys internalize that. Yes. I, 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 I that. really don't know. I'm really, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really, yeah. 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 speak for your speech because I really don't know. I stayed low key on the show on purpose. Y'all about to have me out here. Um, okay, so I'm going to preface everything with saying I have no children. I am single. And uh, yeah, so my self-love is a little different because most every day is pretty much what I want to do. Um, <laughs> I'm not married or anything. And so, uh, but I do think that um, since eh, now that I, maybe like my mid-20s, uh, I've been more focused on really understanding what I'm passionate about and things that make me tick. And I think prior to that, uh, when you're at home or especially a West Indian home, it really, no one cares about you or your opinions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so your opinions, how you feel, where you live, what you thought, how, like it doesn't matter. No. And so I think that um, getting out of that and then you're in a school, I was in a school environment for a really long time. And also there, you're assigned what you're assigned. You might have some flexibility here or there, but for the most part, you spend a large amount of your life really just living up to our external expectations. And so I think I'm finally at a place where I'm able to understand, I've you know, been very focused, like Sarah was saying, on understanding what are the things that I like, what are the things that make me tick, what do I need? And it comes from being purposeful about that. And so I think that I'm, I'm a much better judge of what I need now and I'm still growing, but than I was before, because before, as long as I was living up to whatever the external expectation was, um, anything else that I felt I would feel was like, you know, wrong or crazy or something like, of course I should be happy. I'm getting these grades or doing these other things. And it wasn't focused on myself. So, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I, like, I feel like you channeled me right then because I was like, please say something about West Indians and how you just <laughs> out. You know what? And I felt it. I really, it, no lie, I felt it. I was like, she would say something about this West Indian side. <laughs> I'll throw this no, out there. It's a, it's but so it's a real. So my dad is from, from Charleston, South Carolina, and very similar to West India culture. I don't know. I feel like my dad is the most mm -hmm. West Indian American I could have had as a parent. Um, I have more in common with people with West Indian dads than I do people with African American dads, which is hilarious to me. But mm -hmm. yeah, same same thing. Children are to kind of be seen and not heard for a while until you kind of fight for that right to have a voice. And even then, it's medium volume. <laughs> right, but so it's interesting because I operated the same. You know, and then there's the whole birth order thing, too, because I'm the oldest. So it's myself and my brother. So I very early felt an immense pressure to yeah. rise to the challenges of everything. I was the one that was expected to do everything right. Um, and I was also, I was the example for, like, mm -hmm. all these other little cousins and everybody. It was like, you see, you see what Janine's doing? Like aspire to that and yeah. it was cool it was it was all right through my 20s um but by the time i hit like my 30s i was like this is some bullshit i don't want to be nobody's <laughs> role model i don't be nobody's role model you know? i want to cut the fuck up and now i'm 35 going on 36 hey. I'm just, listen i'm i'm what i call regressing gracefully I'm like, don't listen, watch, listen. don't you have watch a me taboo conversations. You have a taboo conversations online. You instigating in trouble. I'm already here for this week. Ah. I was like, oh, I'll be over here. I'll be mute the whole time. I'm just gonna move my lips. And mute. Come on, now. man. Oh, you I'm can't. Do, you can't go mute. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we doing this. We just to ask the show. Really, but you know, I I really got to a point of rebelliousness because of those pressures just about when I was, you know, hitting that, that precipice of 30. And, you know, I, I effectively had to teach everybody around me that I am a normal human being like everyone else. And you really shouldn't expect me like to never screw up because 
I'm not that I'm looking for it. I, I might, mm -hmm. and it should be respected, <laughs> you know? Um, and I, I really had to be intentional about teaching people how to treat me. So there was about mm -hmm. a six to seven year period in which I had to rewire and uncondition my family to understand that it was going to be my way and not their way anymore. Like in as much as I respect what that upbringing gave me and it gave me a whole lot that I'm, I'm so very thankful for, but I really needed to make that statement for myself to free myself from the bondage of other people's expectations. It was just it was just too much, you know? I mean, you, you already become disappointed with yourself just by virtue of shit that happens in life. And then right. when you have to then think about like a whole bevy of people who you would otherwise be disappointing on top of that for like the most frivolous reasons, like West Indians get angry for like bullshit, literally, honestly. <laughs> and so it's just like, hey, why are you upset? Again, no, your upset does not matter to me. <laughs> that I'm upset with me matters to me. And that is it, you know? So then, yeah. like, I, I mean, I had to, th there were people that I just, I cut off for years um, who I love dearly as family, but I had to let them know, like, it really isn't about you. And if you want to be in my life, you, you have to accept this me, you know, however she shows up you've got to accept that and so now it's it's good because everybody tiptoes they used to see like everybody tiptoed around my brother because he's ignorant i love him but he's like he's been ignorant you know what i'm saying so it's just it's interesting to watch how people like that who come out of the gate swinging they almost actually end up better off yeah. than us shoes you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. you when okay. you're a goody two shoe you end up pleasing nobody not yourself not the people that you're so trying to please nobody the person that does exactly what they want to do they're always pleasing themselves and even if people get pissed off guess what they get over it my yeah. brother's done all sorts of shit all sorts yeah. of shit yeah. Yeah. and it's still like he comes around it's like hey tony oh my right like nothing ever happened. Still loved, still, still applauded. Everyone loves them. So I'm like, well, shit, I could have fucked up a hell of a lot more than I did. But it, I didn't it, have the chops to do yeah, it. Yeah, and, and it's so crazy that you mentioned that because I am old, the oldest as well. I have a younger brother. And I literally had a similar conversation with my dad uh, two days ago. And I was just kind of like, yeah, I kind of grew up where I was afraid to do certain things. And my brother could care less. My brother would just live his best life. And that was, it is what it is, you know? Um, I think to your, your point, for me, okay, when I was 26, I'm for 10, I'm in y'all's age group to talk like oh, it so long ago. So, so back when I was 26, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> let me live. And so when I was 26, uh, 25 my last year of my PhD program, I just realized like I wasn't doing a lot of things that I wanted to do. And the advice I was getting from people, the people I was trying to live up to their expectations and things of that nature, they weren't really happy people themselves. And I was just kind of like, well, y'all not, aren't really happy. What you're telling me to the best of your knowledge is the way things go. But now that I'm here, I'm like, nah, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. And so I spent the last two years kind of just forging my own kind of path and doing my own thing. Uh, sometimes they're on board. Most times they're not, you know, because uh, eh, it's life. But I'm becoming more comfortable with that. And so I'm probably like in year something of, of that five to six year journey you talked about. It's beautiful. It's great. It's See, great. what's interesting for me is that I'm the youngest. Uh, but yet I was the most responsible one because my brother and my sister wild out and my parents were like oh hell no young lady you don't you ain't doing shit like you gonna get these good grades you gonna go to college you gonna stay on the straight and narrow so I'm not that pressure to be different to be you know straight laced and responsible that was the pressure that I mm. had like how like nah you won't be wild now there won't be there won't be any of that so I had a different like I I envy babies of the family who 
got to just do whatever the hell because that was not my experience whatsoever. And even, and I'm by far the youngest, like my sister's seven years older than me. So I am like far and away the youngest. I should have been able to get away with all kinds of shit. And yet mm -mm, none of that was happening. It was very much like you are going to be responsible you know you were a surprise and you're gonna pay off for us <laughs> because <laughs> you, you know, it, I mean, showed up <laughs> listen, my parents thought they were done and i was like hey but they're glad you know they're glad because if they had just been left with them other two whoo yeah it, it was a lot of you, balanced, you know you were the balancer i balanced it all out but uh yeah there was no shenanigans to be had or allowed um, for me. I was definitely not going to wild out. Like it just, it wasn't happening. What's different though is because I moved, like I went to college away from home and then I didn't go back. So my twenties and thirties, I was by myself, you know? And so I got to kind of create my own communities, which made the setting of boundaries and rules of how I was going to engage with people a little bit easier because I wasn't beholden to a, a family unit that I had to be worried about. Um, you know, I was in Virginia, they were in New Jersey, and then I was in North Carolina and they were in New Jersey. So it wasn't until my mom moved here almost three years ago, and now she's three miles away, and I'm experiencing those things now that most people experience in their 20s and I'm at but I'm much older much more outspoken so it was it, it was quick to be like no we're not we're not doing that like my mom was <laughs> my mom will still call and be like oh yeah um why don't you come over and do the da -da? no we're we not we won't be doing the da -da 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 day like that's not yeah. happening I have a, a husband five children a full-time job and a business like mm -mm. The, the schedule has no space for this today so yeah I had I but I'm glad I'm glad for for having her in close proximity and everything that we get to do together but I'm also glad that it happened now and I'm able to set those boundaries because otherwise it would have probably drove, drew, drove me more crazy um, than just me being on my own yeah, no, totally. I'm going to take a clip of that and send it to my brother and be like, see, if I hadn't been so awesome, your life would have been very different. You're Very welcome. different. Yeah, yeah. Send it to, <laughs> send it to all, all the younger siblings and be like, yeah. see, you lucky I didn't wild out. Exactly. You're there welcome. You know. But the, the interesting, so what's funny is um, about two months ago, my brother and I were having this discussion with my dad about like you know just our respective upbringing and I mentioned that you know I probably could have done with getting into some more, more things in my younger years and my dad's just like well yeah I mean you could have done that or you could have done this and I'm like wait what like who are you who are you like mm -hmm. that was not the message and he's like oh you couldn't nobody pushed you to go to college that was one of the things nobody pushed you to go to college i said okay. wait okay. what i'm okay. like wait a minute seriously i said yeah. so if i had come to you and said i wasn't going to college but instead taking a gap year to like explore myself like with i don't know shamans or something like that like that that shit it, would not have been okay. it would not have gone not over have well okay. i'm like what do you mean that revisionist history revisionist right. history they hit the <laughs> age and they forget every my dad i remember my dad calling me. i was having problems with some classes in grad school and he was i was like man i don't know how i'm gonna pass these classes or he was like it's about learning it's about the experience it's not why are you so, uh, so hung up on grades because for the first are you and what have you done exactly i was like what are you talking about you you literally made me like this. <laughs> I am what you made me. <laughs> yeah. Like, who raised you? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. The grades, they're subjective, and all these, I was, what is happening? And then, like, 
grad school being an option. I didn't know that people stopped school in high school until I was getting ready to go to college. And some of my friends were like, oh, we're done with school. And I was like, well, how would you get a job and live life? Because for um, in my house, a master's was the PhD was optional. You were getting a master's. Like the PhD was like, oh, maybe. And so to realize that that was not the case, oh man, talk about mind blown. Oh my God. It's, you know, it's interesting. And it's the, I mean, all of this is the reason why I try my best to be so intentional with my own kids about how I'm affecting them. I don't know about you too, Sarah. Like I'm so hyper aware of like these things, like, you know, down to stuff like that with grades it's like especially up here with this stupid ass common core that we got no we got we got the common core too i'm just like look do your best you know and like leave the rest to whatever it's gonna be and that's been my spiel i don't stress that stuff i'm not gonna have kids crying and and feeling like they want to go hang themselves because they don't know algebraic expressions that are really slated for like ninth graders I'm just not, you know, it's just not the lane I need to be in. And, you know, even too, like with my oldest, um, I'm hyper aware of like not making her feel too ultra responsible to her younger siblings too early. So she understands that like, they all need to take care of each other. We we try to impress upon them like, this is what you got. This is your family unit. You know, God forbid anything happens to me or your dad, y'all are gonna always have each other. But I'm very hyper aware of making sure that she's a true child, you know, Mm -hmm. able to make all the childlike mistakes, even though I want to crack her skull some days. But, you know, she's allowed. She's allowed. Mm -hmm. And I don't want her to ever feel like she's got to be a second me, you know, or ride, be rise so high to an expectation that isn't she's not capable of in the Mm -hmm. moment that I may want it for her. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I go through that. I went through that a lot with my son because they we divorced when they were small, and I can he was three going on four, and I can remember people saying, you know, oh, he's like the man of the house now. No, he's four. He ain't the man of <laughs> nothing. nothing. He's not even fully potty trained. Like potty trained. I was gonna so, say he ain't even the man of the potty yet at that stage. Right. He ain't but got so. full control of his bowels. And you talk about he the man of the house. He don't pay no bills. <laughs> like what? Like no, we're not doing this. So no, I never. Um, I never wanted them to feel that level of responsibility. I still don't. I think they need to be responsible for their age. Like I think there needs to be a age appropriate level of responsibility. I agree with you about looking out for one another. Like y'all are siblings, you have to to look out for one another and have a, have care for one another, um, and defend one another. Like some if some shit goes down, you got to have your your brothers back, your sisters back. But I just I don't want to put that burden on them to feel like they have to walk a certain path or do a certain thing. They're getting tweens and teens now so I'm starting to recognize that you know the decisions about college and those sorts of things are looming so I want to encourage them to explore their interests and figure out what it is that they want to do but not push them in any one particular direction I've I've had that conversation with my daughter a few times because she's very creative she likes dance and she likes fashion and those sorts of things and that's not necessarily a traditional four-year college path so her path is gonna look different you know than her siblings and she's got to know that that's okay and that if she goes to a technical school or a two-year program while you know her other siblings have done four-year programs because of the nature of what they're interested in that there's nothing inferior about that you know there's enough messages out in the world telling them that they ain't shit, they ain't enough, you know, and I'm right. not, I don't want that message to come across from me as their parents. So, and not that I felt like I got that from my own parents, but I'm just trying to be more intentional mm-hmm. about, you know, letting them figure things out without feeling that pressure. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a fine lane. Like, Eleni is the same way in that she's very creative. 
great at art, um, great at science. Um, she's probably gonna end up going, we're already talking FIT probably, um, you know, presuming that we're here because that's what she seems focused on. And, and that's okay, <laughs> you know, whereas back when I was going to school, they'd been like, well, I well. mean, how much does it pay? Mm -hmm. You know, how much you're going to make doing that? You know, it's that kind mm -hmm. of thing to deter you. Like, I remember talking about <clears throat> potentially going to culinary school and it was like, Ooh, yeah. that's a good backup. But, right. but so here's, here's the, the kicker family. about it, though. So I am the cook of the family. And every time I throw something here, it's like, Jenny, you should have a bed and breakfast. Oh, should I now? Oh, should I? Because when really? I wanted to go to culinary school, because I kind of remember right. wanting to go to culinary school, but y'all weren't trying to hear me or feel me. So y'all just enjoy them appetizers I made from scratch. You just enjoy. Yeah, them. and that's another thing I try to be intentional about with them as well is getting them to understand that the things that they love and are passionate about, or just are innately talented with, can be lucrative. Um, y'all know I'm developing my podcast and my son is my engineer like I'm he's learning how to edit sounds and all those sorts of things and those are things that he's naturally he's been doing that for years he's had a YouTube channel since he was nine so he already knows how to do he's like oh well I can edit video I can edit audio this is not a problem and I pay him a little money for doing it but there are people who build whole careers editing other people's podcasts and it's quite lucrative. So getting them to understand too that it doesn't necessarily have to be college and a nine to five, you know, it might be, and I've told this story, I've got a friend right now whose son graduated college. He's taking a gap year between now and when he starts med school. He is like driving for Uber, walking dogs for WAG and doing graphics on Fiverr and is completely content with life. And she's terrified that he's going to be like, this is the way. Like, I can, you know, and just be like, fuck that <laughs> right. school. I'm going to walk these dogs. Like, she's terrified, you know, that that's what's going to happen. But, um, you know, the, the world of work just looks different. And I think encouraging our kids to have, you know, multiple streams of income, not give up their imagination, not give up that right to play is, is just really important and we got to model that you know for them too because I got crayons in the desk right now like I love my adult coloring books they are essential sure. so I think we just got to encourage people to to follow their happy like I'd gone to my high school reunion um in December and there were a few people I'd gone to school with and you know you're chatting it up and naturally the first thing you discuss is oh so what are you you know what are you doing and, and there were like at least two of them that were like, oh, you know, I'm back in school, I'm back at the, pa oh, where do you live? I'm with the parents. And like immediately I could see how they were cringing inside to have to say that. And I was like, dude, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you, pick, you, the you know, like you, right, you pick something that didn't work. And so you're trying at something again. And sometimes you got to go back to home base to, you know, get your bearings so you can go off again. I was like, there's really no shame in that. And it, like, it happened twice. And I was just like, you know, why are we so conditioned to make these judgments about people because they're make, you know, like, like he's happy, legitimately happy in the work he's doing. If you're happy doing the work, God bless you. You live in your parents' house. It works for them. It works for you. <clears throat> God bless you. It goes back to that whole piece I was saying on the show about comparison. It's like, there's this whole and you mentioned it too Paul before this whole everybody's so wrapped up in this social media thing it's like everybody's living their best life everybody's traveling and everybody's doing cool stuff and here I am in my dad's basement and trying to get through this social work degree you know not sexy but it's sexy for him in his life mm -hmm. in his lane because eventually he'll make good money and he'll be able to move out and he'll have his own place and all will be well but it's like this mindset it's like we trick ourselves into thinking like everybody's doing something so much more monumental than what i'm doing in this present moment and it's it's so far from the truth like i i've just i can't tell you how many people i've met who i thought were doing great things and it's like they don't know what the fuck they're doing either 
<laughs> it's like, you know, like they, they're just as lost too, but in a different way. It's just they get to do it in Bali mm -hmm. versus in somebody's basement, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> like <laughs> perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, I agree. Yeah. Well, good chat, troops. This was good, I think. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even have to use my little sign that I made. I'm excited. What sign did you make? My in my lane, because I didn't know how how parental Stop. we were gonna get today. So I was just gonna no. be like, all right, I'm positive you're ridiculous. For, for First of all, you made a, a, the, a the, whole sign. I, I, hey, I can't. Listen, it, I cannot. Next week is all you, boo. Oh, well, yeah. definitely. This is this all you next week. <laughs> it's about That's, to be grown and lit. It's about to be grown yeah. and sexy. Hey. I'm so Damn. Young. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> so, what y'all got going on before we close up? Black Blogs Matter. Um, it's still <laughs> going strong. We're on week four four of the blog challenge and we day seven of the micro blog challenge follow the hashtag read the content it's hot fire people are upset i said the you know the yeah. stats are high and the retweets are low people are people <laughs> still in the same they feel it it's it's too too deep. Deep. Yo, it's they're getting the greatest deep. metrics ever to be yes. proud of that's what's up it is. Yeah, no, it's it. getting it. it's making people think, making people stop and think and stop and stare. Um, so yeah. that's really good. And I'm a week away from the launch of my podcast, Leading in Color. So be looking out for that on the countdown. I've just um, <laughs> recorded my third episode, so I'm launching all three of them. Bam, bam, bam. Um, just okay. straight out the gate, Shoot and then it. I'll roll into my uh, biweekly content after that. So I'm very excited about. All of that, and then I'm on the countdown to work human. I'll be in Nashville um, in March with Viola Let's Davis go. and George yeah. Clooney. Let's go! Wait, are you guys gonna link? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. okay. absolutely. She's not awesome. gonna make me drive four hours to do it either. She's already creeping up. I'm in you know, the city. <laughs> She's creeping up. This shade <laughs> is a little much for me. I ain't nobody. Be Twenty minutes from the house. But I am thankful. But I'm thankful. <laughs> However, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be dope. Um, for me, I'm working on. Oh man, I'm working on a couple of things right now. Um, let's see. First off, uh, my, uh, I guess an associate of mine started the movement on Instagram three fifths a person, from three fifths a person. That's the hashtag. Um, you should check the hashtag out. It's really cool. It's a lot of just young professionals, um, bringing awareness to the fact that uh, we were once, you know three-fifths of a person and then talking about the different accomplishments that they've made. So it's a lot of doctors, it's a lot of entrepreneurs, opera singers, like just a lot of people. It's a very dope hashtag to check out on Instagram. And I think he may be starting it on Twitter. So that's the one. Uh, the second thing um, I mentioned already, I'm trying to see uh, what's really good with this New York moon cybersecurity moonshot challenge. And, uh, and then I'm also uh, working more with a couple of businesses trying to get a couple more clients for my marketing analytics and just business development around your data, data driven revenue stream generation stuff. So. Very, very, That's what we're cool. Doing. very cool. Well, thank you all for joining us for episode four and be sure to follow everybody, connect with us, let us know what you're thinking on these topics that we keep covering, and we'll see you again next week, same time. That's right. Different topic. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. I don't know how to close.